we are asked to verify the identity. Um, now, this is saying that this left side of the equation, cosine to the third x cosecant x plus sine x cosine x is equal to cotangent x. We want to verify that this left side does in fact equal cotangent x. So what you would do is take the left side and we want to simplify it until we can make it look like cotangent x. Now you can't do whatever you want. You have to use identities that are true identities from your um, basic trig identities and you have to use sound algebra practices. Okay, so looking at this, the first thing I notice is that I have cosine here and here. So I'm going to use factoring and I'm going to factor out a cosine. Here that would leave me with, and I took one out so I would still have a cosine squared instead of a cosine to the third and a cosecant x. Plus I've taken the cosine out so that just leaves me with the sine of x here. Well, now what am I going to do? Um, I notice I have some cosecants mixed in with um, a sine. I could try writing everything in terms of sine, but notice I have this cosine that's kind of in the way. Well, is there a way so that I have all of the same things in here? And this is one trick you might try is using your identities to replace this cosine with something with either a sine or a cosecant so that inside this parenthesis, I'm only working in terms of sines and cosecants. Well, there is. There's an identity that says that cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace the cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x. Okay. I'm also going to rewrite this cosecant as 1 over sine x that's what cosecant is equivalent to. Okay, so now I have this. Notice everything in here is in terms of sine, so it may work out to simplify a little better for me. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 1 over sine x. Okay, so on the outside I still have that cosine x. Inside that gives me 1 over sine x. Okay, minus if I take 1 over sine x times sine squared x, that gives me sine squared x over sine x. And then I have plus sine x down here. Well, notice here I have a sine squared over sine. I can reduce that. Sine divided into sine squared just leaves me with sine x. So now I have 1 over sine x minus sine x plus sine x. All right. So that's making progress because notice I have a minus sine x and a plus sine x, which would be zero. And this is just, you kind of work through it. Sometimes your method won't work. You won't end up with cotangent x and you'll have to kind of go back, make sure there weren't any errors or maybe just form a new game plan, but keep working with it. All right, now I'm left with cosine x times one over sine x. If I multiply those, Top times the top gives me cosine x. Bottom times the bottom gives me sine x. And what is cosine x over sine x equivalent to? It is the same thing as cotangent x. And I have now verified the identity. I showed that the left-hand side of the equation, all that craziness, was in fact equal to cotangent x. Okay, here's another. Let's verify this identity. The cosecant of x minus the sine of x, we want to show that that's equal to cosine times the cotangent. All right, so we want to show that the left and the right sides are equivalent. You can do that by working a little bit with the right side, a little bit with the left until they both look the same, or just by taking one side and working with it until you get the other side. I'm going to work with this side because I know that cosecant and sine are related. Um, cosecant is 1 over sine x. Okay, so I have 1 over sine x minus sine x. I want to combine those. Notice over here I have no addition or subtraction. I have a single term. So I want to create the same thing on this side. To do that, I have to combine these. I need a common denominator. 
right now this is over 1, my common denominator would have to be sine x. So what I'm going to do is multiply times sine x in this denominator. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do the same to the top. That's our rules. That's the rules for working with fractions. Okay, well, that leaves me with 1 over sine x still here. And over here, sine x times sine x is sine squared x over sine x. Now they have a common denominator, so I can combine them to make a single fraction. Now I have 1 minus sine x in my numerator over sine x in my denominator. Well, hopefully this triggered a red uh, flag for you. That's one of our identities. 1 minus sine squared is, is equivalent to what from our identity chart? It's the same as cosine squared x. So now I have cosine squared x over sine x. Well, I don't have cotangent. I have a cosine, Well, so that's a plus. Notice here I have two things multiplied, and here I have a single fraction. I know I want a cosine, so sometimes you have to just stop and go, okay, am I any closer? Well, I am. I have at least a cosine here. What if we separated this, pulled out that cosine, one of them, okay, cosine squared is cosine times cosine, okay, and here we're doing a little reversal. We're kind of separating it off. That's the same as cosine times cosine over sine. And what is cosine over sine equivalent to? It's equivalent to cotangent x. And I have shown that this left-hand side can be simplified to look exactly like the right-hand side. And that is what we do when we verify identities. Okay, here is another example. This one we have some fractions. We want to show that all of this on the left-hand side is actually just the same as 2 cosecant x, a very simple expression. Well, but when you have fractions, the first thing you'll want to do is combine them to make a single fraction, most likely. For that, we need a common denominator. Okay, so we are going to create a common denominator. Um, this had sine x and this had 1 plus cosine x. So this one would need the sine x, so I'm going to multiply by sine x, and whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do the same to the numerator. This one had the sine x, it needs the 1 plus cosine x, so I multiply this denominator by 1 plus cosine x, and whatever I do to the top, I also have to do to the bottom. Alright, so we're creating our common denominator. Let's multiply those out so we can see what we now have. Here, sine x times sine x gives me sine squared x. On the bottom here, I'm going to leave these factored. I don't want to combine those. I'll leave them out just in case that's beneficial. On the top here, we have 1 plus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x. So we have to FOIL. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times cosine is cosine x. Now take cosine times everything. Cosine times 1 is cosine x and cosine times cosine is cosine squared x. All over sine x times 1 plus cosine x. Okay. Now we have a common denominator. All right. What if we were to now add the numerators together? We can because now we have a common denominator of sine x times 1 plus cosine x. Okay. Well, let's see. We have the squareds I'm going to put first. So I have a sine squared plus a cosine squared. I can't combine those, but we'll kind of write them together. Um, then I have my cosines. I have 1, 2 cosine x. And then I have a plus 1. All right. So now what do I have going on? Well, hopefully you recognize this identity here. Look at your identity sheet. Always be checking back to it to see if there's one of those identities. And the more that you work with them, the easier they'll be to recognize because you'll remember, hey, I've used that before. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. It's equal to 1. That's one of our identities. So I have 1 plus 2 cosine x plus 1. 
over sine x times co 1 plus cosine x. Excuse me. All right. So now what do I have? Well, I can combine my like terms on top. 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have 2 plus 2 cosine x over sine x times 1 plus cosine x. That looks pretty messy, and it's not even close to 2 cosecant x. Um, I do have one benefit. I know cosecant is, is 1 over sine x. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get 2 over sine x because that would be the same as 2 times the cosecant. I definitely got 2s, and I've got a cosine or excuse me, a sign in the denominator. The problem is all of these cosines. Well, notice that here 2 is located here and here. So I can factor out a 2, and that leaves me with 1 plus cosine x. And on the bottom, I have sine x times 1 plus cosine x. Well, looky there. I have a factor in the top and a factor in the bottom that are the same. I can cancel those. That leaves me with 2 over sine x which is the same as 2 cosecant x. And I have verified my identity. Okay, and again, how, how is that possible? Well, I'll write it out over here if you need the, the fine steps. 2 over sine is the same as 2 times 1 over sine x, and 1 over sine x is cosecant. Okay. And again, this looks crazy, but the more you work with them, the better you'll get, I promise. Okay, here's our final example we're going to go through. Um, we want to verify that cosine squared times secant squared plus cosecant squared is the same as just plain old cosecant squared. So again, we want to do something to this left-hand side to break it down and just get cosecant. Well, what can we do here? Well, what I'm going to do is I know, just looking at this, that um, secant squared is the same as 1 over cosine squared. Okay, and I know that if I'm able to then multiply this cosine squared in there, I will get 1 here. So that's what I'm going to try, and I'm going to try the same thing with the cosecant, but cosecant is 1 over sine, so this would be 1 over sine squared x. Okay, so let's try that, see if it works. If not, we can always back out and start over. Um, so now I'm going to distribute to remove my parentheses, because there's no parentheses over here. Cosine squared times 1 over cosine squared is cosine squared x over cosine squared x and cosine squared times 1 over sine squared is cosine squared over sine squared. Okay, well cosine squared over cosine squared is 1, plus cosine over sine is cotangent, so cosine squared over sine squared would be cotangent squared. Okay, well now we have no parentheses, we've got one less term, we have 1 plus cotangent squared x. Let's look back at what we wanted. We want cosecant squared. Well, lucky day, 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. That's one of our identities. So we've verified this identity in just four short steps. We made sure that that left-hand side was the same as that right-hand side, and we did everything legally. 